Hi, my name's Ethan. I'm the uh, creator of PSP Seek, and I'm going to be demonstrating the uh, the probabilistic triggering functionality within this program. Um, show you how to use it in order to record and create um, drum loops for drum and bass. Um, so first of all, you might notice that I'm not actually running PSP Seek on PSP. I'm running it on my PC. The reason for this is much easier to record. Uh, however, when I talk about um, button presses and any sort of interaction with user interface, I will do it from uh, the perspective that, that you're using this on the PSP. Okay, so uh, what do I mean by trigger probabilities? So in a typical sequencer, um, audio sequencer, uh, whether or not a note is turned uh, off or on is a, a binary operation. Either um, the note triggers or it doesn't trigger. Uh, in PSP Seek, um, this um, choice to trigger or not trigger is a probability. It can range anywhere from zero to 100%. So if uh, you have a step where uh, a track will never trigger, then the trigger value is zero. So for instance, in this loop right here, um, all steps in, in this loop have a trigger probability of zero. The trigger probability is seen in the upper right-hand side of the screen. Uh, and you can see next to trig, um, there's number zero. Uh, if you want to always trigger a note, then the trigger probability is set to 100. And if you want to trigger with some chance of triggering or not triggering, then you set the probability between zero and 100. So what I have uh, loaded up right now are three uh, wave file playback uh, generators. Um, Along with, uh, along with uh, filters associated with them. And loaded into them, I have um, a couple of different drum loops. I have the Amen break and I have another break put into, into, those, um, into those generators. And I'm gonna show how you would trigger uh, notes in order to create drum and bass. So first I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to um, first loop, uh, and in that loop, there is a single amen break playing with all the trigger probabilities set at 100%. And what you can see here is that, um, is that, the, that the loop never changes, that it's the same thing playing back every time the sequencer goes around. So, um, and you can see in the upper right hand side that the trigger value is set to 100 there. If we go to step 16, the trigger value is set to 100 there. So it's, it's a constant loop. So now I'm going to go to the next loop. And in this case, uh, we have two in breaks playing, um, playing on separate uh, tracks. And it's still a constant loop. It's a little more complicated, a little more interesting. However, uh, it doesn't change every time the loop um, goes around. So now this is a loop where we have trigger probabilities that are not always 100. So for instance, at step 16 here, we have trigger probability of 67. So if we listen for a moment, You can see that the loop is a little bit different every time it plays because uh, the triggers don't always happen. So um, just to, to demonstrate a little bit more, I'll add in a few more trigger points so you can hear how it changes the loop. So if you want to change the trigger value, what you do is you hold down the X button and then um, use the analog stick for bringing the trigger value down. So you can see here, I set the trigger value for the second wave file playback uh, to uh, 52%. 
so moving on to the next loop. What I've done here is I have, in the third channel, I have uh, another uh, drum loop which is playing back with a very regular rhythm. And what it does is help anchor the, um, the sound a little bit and uh, keeps it from being perhaps a little too chaotic. Okay, and in the final loop, what I've done is apply um, the filter to um, various steps in the loop. In the, in the other step, in the other uh, loops, uh, none of the steps have the filter um, turned on at all. In this one, different steps have different uh, filter frequencies and filter types associated with it. So you can hear how every time the loop goes around, the, the sound changes a little bit. So anyways, uh, that's an example of how you can use um, trigger probabilities and drum loops for making drone bass and to make it very quickly and, I don't know if I say easily exactly, but it certainly simplifies the process in that you don't have to uh, program every step exactly, that you can you can set some probabilities, find some, some good uh, potential re-trigger points, and just let it go. Uh, so uh, this trigger probability concept is also useful in other ways other than just um, for, um, for doing uh, drum loops. You can also use it, for instance, uh, if you have a synthesized um, drum loop. So if you have a couple of tracks, like a, like a BAM, generator for generating uh, like a kick drum and a carpal strong generator for generating hi-hats. What you can do is you can create a skeleton with uh, trigger probabilities 100% for the basic loop and then uh, all the little flourishes you can program uh, trigger probabilities of lower percentages so that way every time it plays you have that that base skeleton so that way the loop makes sense but then all the little um, pieces that may or may not trigger, make it interesting every time it loops around. So that's about all I have to say on trigger probabilities right now. Um, if you have any questions on this, uh, I can be reached at pspseek at dspmusic.org. Additionally, there's a PSPSeq Google group. Uh, it's the main support page for PSPSeq. Uh, if you search for PSPSeq, on, uh, on Google Groups, you'll find it very quickly. Also, uh, the homepage for PSPSeq is dspmusic.org slash PSP. Uh, thanks, I hope you found this interesting, and uh, hope you enjoyed.